When we're studying the Bible, we, of course, pay attention to the words on the page, but we also need to pay attention to where things happen in the Bible. Because frequently in the scriptures, geography is intensely theological, and theology is expressed in geographical terms. I pointed this out before in my videos, but I want to use it today specifically to point out where Jesus was tempted and the significance of that in the biblical narrative. So when, when the Spirit led Jesus to be tempted, he didn't lead him into Galilee or to Tyre and Sidon. He led him into the wilderness where Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and then these temptations began. Why into the wilderness? Because when you go back to the Torah, Israel was in the wilderness for 40 years, being tested, being tempted. And how they do? What was their track record like? They failed time and time again. They didn't listen to the word of God. They rebelled. And in so doing, they were unfaithful to the Lord. So Jesus, as the representative human and the representative Israelite, as all Israel and all humanity in one person, he retraces the steps of the Israelites. He goes into the wilderness to be tempted. In order that, where Israel was unfaithful, he might be faithful. Where they were disobedient and did not listen to the word of God, he is going to be obedient and listen to the word of his father. And notice too, when the devil addresses him, he says, if you are the son of God, do this or do that. Remember, in the Old Testament, Israel is frequently described as the son of God. And where that son of God, Israel, failed, this eternal son of God is going to be successful. He's going to be faithful to his father. And keep in mind, too, how Jesus responds each time to the devil. When the devil puts a temptation in front of him, Jesus quotes from the Torah, specifically Deuteronomy 6 through 8, that section which is all about when Israel was in the wilderness. So, Jesus, as the eternal, faithful Son of the Father, goes into the wilderness for us, for me, for you, for Israel, for Jews, for Gentiles, for all humanity, in order that he might recapitulate Israel's history and do perfectly what they did so imperfectly. Do perfectly what we, even in our own lives, still do very imperfectly. So that by being faithful as the representative Israelite, representative human, he might engage in this ongoing work of salvation on our behalf. And let me point this out as kind of a PS to this video. So when I was in Israel, I noticed that the guide pointed out the mount, the traditional mount of temptation as being on the west side of the Jordan River. And I told our guide, I don't think that fits with the biblical narrative. Because when the Spirit compelled Jesus into the wilderness, he would have gone across the Jordan to where Israel was while Moses was still alive, while he was preaching these words from Deuteronomy. So it fits better with the biblical narrative that the Mount of Temptation or where the temptations took place was on the other side, on the west side of the Jordan, on the, on the east side of the Jordan, rather, in the Transjordan region. That fits the biblical narrative because that's where Israel was when they were tempted by all of these occasions which led to their disobedience. So anyway, keep in mind, when you're reading the Bible, when you're studying the Bible, to pay attention to where things happen because this geography is very frequently pregnant with theology. And the theology is expressed in terms of mountains and valleys and rivers and the wilderness.